All right, so in this in this particular video, we're going to be looking at this question here. So we're given a vector field, and this is a vector field three uh, of three variables. We're told to find a potential function phi that satisfies the following relation. So the vector field is going to be equal to the gradient of that scalar function, which is something called a potential function. Now, the idea is that the first thing we need to do, of course, the first step is to show that the vector field is conservative. The only, re the only way that we can find a potential function phi that satisfies the equation is by proving that the following condition is met. So if the curl of the vector field f is equal to zero, then the vector field is conservative and we are able to find a function phi. If this is not the case, then we shouldn't waste our time trying to find it because we won't be able to. So the first thing is always to check that the vector field is conservative. So let's do that here. We know that this is going to be equal to the 3 by 3 determinant, so we have our three components here. Then we have the components of the derivative, so this is partial of y, partial of z, and now we have fx, fy, and fz. Now what I normally like to do, because this is a fairly long equation to remember, is just to try and write it down every time. So we, here we have this times fz minus z fy minus j and then this is going to be derivative with respect to x of f z minus z fx and then plus k of x f y minus y of fx so what I like to do is to write this down first. I don't want to plug in the values just yet. I'm going to do it term by term. So we're going to take the first component and we're going to calculate that. So we have this minus z fy. What is this going to be? Well, we're going to grab the third component or the z component of this vector field differentiated with respect to y. So that's going to be 3 times e to the 3z. Now we're going to subtract the second component, which is the y component, differentiated with respect to z. And this is going to be 3e e to the 3z. And this is indeed 0, so that's good, because we, if this condition is to be met, every single component of that vector field should be 0. Now we go into the next term. We're going to ignore the negative sign, because if this is 0, that's not really going to matter. So we're going to get partial effects with respect to fz minus partial z with respect to fx. So here we're going to grab the z component differentiated with respect to x. Well, that's going to be 0. And then we're going to grab this one differentiated with respect to z. So that's going to be 0 as well. So this is 0. So that's good so far. Now we need to find out what this one is. So we have fy minus yfx. So we're going to grab the y component differentiated with respect to x, so this is going to be 2y minus, and now we grab this one, differentiate with respect to y, that becomes 2y, so this becomes 0. Good, so that this proves that our curl of a vector field is equal to 0, which means that the vector field is conservative, and we can proceed to find the potential function. So in this step, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, we want the gradient of that scalar function to be equal to the vector field itself. And we know that this is going to have three components. So we have partial of phi with respect to x, partial of phi with respect to y, and then partial of phi with respect to z. And then this should be equal to all those components. So now if we go back here, we have y squared. So that's the first component of the function. Then the second one is going to be 2xy plus e3z. So 2xy plus e to the 3z. And the last one is going to be 3y e3z. So let me just double check. Yeah, everything is in order. So now what we can do is we can as we did in the last video, we're just going to start off with one of the components and we're going to, to, we're going to make it equal to this. Because what this means is that each of, these, each of these derivatives should be equal to each of these components uh, respectively. So we have 
partial of 5 with respect to x is going to be equal to y squared. Now we integrate both sides with respect to x, so this is going to give us an initial guess for what the function is going to be. Well, it's not really a guess, it's going to tell what the function is, but it's going to be missing some information. So we're going to have y squared with respect to dx, and then this is going to become y squared times x plus some function g, let's call it g, and this is going to be a function of y and z. Because remember that our function phi is now a function of three variables, we're only integrating with respect to x here, which means that there could be a function of the other two variables that, when differentiated, it vanishes to give us this original function. So this is our, our this is basically our initial um, function. So now, in order to construct it, we need to keep finding those functions until we get to a numerical constant of integration. So the next thing we can do is we can differentiate this with respect to either z or y. I like to do it in order, so I start with x, then y, then z. So let's differentiate with respect to y. So this is going to be equal to the following. So differentiate this with respect to y, that becomes 2yx or 2xy. And now this one differentiated with respect to y, well this is just going to be partial of g with respect to y. And then this expression here should be equal to this component of the vector field f. So this is going to be 2xy plus e to the 3z. So you notice here that now this component and this component are going to cancel out. So you're going to be left with the following equation. And now, what you're going to do is you're going to integrate both sides with respect to y. So this is going to give you y, g of y, z, is going to be equal to integral of e to the 3z with respect to y. And now you're going to integrate this, so this becomes y e to the 3z plus some other function, and this is going to be a function of z, because we now integrate with respect to y, but we're missing one variable, so now we make another function in terms of that. So now the next step is going to be to put, plug this back into the original potential function we had, so phi, x, y, and z, and this is going to be equal to y squared times x plus y e to the 3z plus hz. Alright? And now the next step is to differentiate with respect to the next variable, which is z. So we're going to differentiate phi again, this time with respect to z. So this is going to become 0. This becomes 3y e to the 3z. And now th this differentiator becomes h prime of z. And this expression should be equal to the third component of the vector field, which is 3y e to the 3z. And once again, we notice that these two here are going to cancel out. And then this means that our the first derivative of h with respect to z is 0. And this immediately implies that h of z is just going to be equal to some constant. Let's call that constant k. And it is a numerical constant. Because if you differentiate this with respect to z, you get 0. So that means that our final expression for the potential function of x, y, and z is simply going to be y squared x plus y e to the 3z plus some numerical constant k. And that's our final answer. And you can check this by taking the basically taking the gradient of this function, so derivatives with respect to the whole function and plugging them here and then just comparing term by, by term to see if this gives you the right answer. So for example, if we differentiate the whole function with respect to x, here we would get y squared because we know this is going to vanish, this vanishes, this becomes y squared, so that's there. Uh, differentiate this with respect to y, this becomes 2yx, this becomes e to the 3z, so that's going to be there. And then finally with respect to z, this is going to become 3y e to 3z, which is right here, and that's how we check that this is correct. Where does this actually physically come in handy? Well, there are certain cases, for example, in, imagine that we have a force field, and there is a relation between the fo a force field and a potential uh, 
potential energy field so uh, you can if the force field acting on some particle or body is conservative then that means that there exists a potential a scalar function which is the potential energy and then the derivative of that or the gradient of that is going to give you the force another example is having the electric field being conservative if the electric field is conservative then you can always find a potential v which would be an, an electric potential function which um, whose gradient is going to be equal to the electric field so this is where this kind of um, um, technique of finding the the potential function comes in handy it, it occurs quite a lot in physics and in general we can relate a vector field to some scalar function by via this relation as long as the vector field is conservative and this is also that is something that is going to come in quite handy when we do some line integrals later on